So hey everybody, um, so we're just here today to cover part two of the first uh, two part video that I started many months ago about the C-Motion C-Volution, the new C-Volution system. And today obviously we're going to talk about um, its basic 3D functions that, that can work on any rig. Now today we have a screen plane production rig, which is their bigger rig for larger cameras like the Alexa. but. Um, this system can work on any 3D rig out there that accepts, that has motor mounts. And so we're going to run through your through basic setup and the uh, focus calibration, the scales, so you can match the focus scales and um, how to change directions on the motor so everything's lined up and all that stuff. Now, there are some advanced functions that you get with the uh, C display, but uh, we're not going to get into those today. Um, the advanced functions are only available on the screen plane rig, so we'll get into those on the next video. Alright, All right. so before we start, I just wanted to go over a few troubleshooting things that you want to avoid or know about, so if they happen, you know how to deal with it when you're using a C-Motion. So one of the things is, you'll see here, this handset has an external antenna. The uh, C-Volution also comes available as with an internal antenna. Um, so this one might get you a little bit more range, that's what I have, um, but this works perfectly fine. So just be aware that there's two systems. Now if there's, if you have a unit with an external antenna and you don't use the antenna, it obviously it won't work correctly, so that's one thing. There's a black version of the handsets and the, the Cayman, and a white version that has to do with you know, the Alexa and the white version is for Alexa uh, compatibility and the black version is, is, is not, doesn't work with the Alexa. Um, the other thing is if you get too close to the Cayman, so if these two things ever get too close, you may lose communication. So if you have to operate really close to the transmitter, what you definitely want to do is go into the menu and turn down the RF. Uh, power. So turn it down to minimum if you're going to be pulling right next to the camera. Obviously you get far away you can boost that up. So if you find yourself dropping and you're right next to it because you're aligning something, just go into the menu and turn the, uh, the antenna power down. So that's a, a frequent uh, issue um, to look out for. You can tell whether this is a black or a white unit because of the antenna guard right here. It will actually be light. This one is obviously black, but that's how you tell what, uh, what version of the uh, camion you have or system. Now, one of the other things to look out for is usually when I'm setting up a brand new system, the first thing I do is I go into the unit, I go into the main menu, and I go down to factory settings, and I just reset everything to factory it just gets rid of anything that might be in here from a previous rental or previous user and it could save you a lot of headache. So reset the hand unit first thing. So let's just go over here what's going on with the rig. And this could be any rig of course. Um, so first we would actually um, set up our motors and I have one here for, and you can see I label mine. Iris, focus, zoom, and I also label them red. You see the red tags on there and, and the red lens. And I do the same thing with the bottom camera, and blue, blue tags. Usually do red, right, left, blue. And in this rig, the Cayman is actually built in. So you can see there all the focus iris zoom motors go into the rig itself. Now, and there's the transmitting unit, the wireless unit that actually has a plug for the uh, convergence right there. That's the convergence motor and the I.O. motors inside the rig. So normally what we would do is we would just have a Cayman as part of our C-Motion, C-Volution kit, which is an eight motor Cayman like we saw from the previous video. So we would hook up the focus iris and the zoom motors here and the um, I.O. and the convergence there. So we, all we would have is this one unit mounted anywhere on the rig. All the cables would go to that and um, you'd be all set up. So step one is just to cable everything up. And um, now let's go into some specifics.
I'm using here the uh, Panther TriStar Dolly. It has a remote. Boom. So here's our basic setup. And the rig's all set up and cabled, and the two cameras are, are actually synced together. And we got a HDSCI out to our little trans video monitor here. So you can clearly see that there's a lot wrong right now. <laughs> so we're going to fix that. This is the first step one is just to cable everything up. And then uh, step two is to then fix all the initial problems with directions that our motors are going, which is what's happening right now. And then step three is to match the focus, the iris, and the zoom of both lenses to each other. All right, so step one is turn the hand unit on, and you can do that by pressing the bottom button here. And it's going to say searching for Cayman, and it finds it. And notice that the focus scale is blinking yellow. Sometimes the iris scale will be blinking yellow as well. Um, this means that it wants to be calibrated. That's why it's yellow, and the calibration button is yellow as well. So you're going to want to hold that button down, and it's going to say hold for calibration until it says calibration armed and then you let go. And then right there in the motor start calibrating. So before you calibrate, make sure that all the motors are tight, that the iris rod is tight. And um, actually, if, if they're all tight and they, the gears still jump off of the lens, you just want to make sure that um, one of the things you can do is that maybe the torque setting is too high on the motor, so it's hitting the end stop and pushing the motor off. So just turn the torque setting down to minimum uh, or weak. I mean, there's four settings. So uh, that would be my recommendation probably off the start unless you have a lens with a really heavy barrel uh, motion. Uh, just put them down to minimum and you won't have a problem with this. And once again, just check to make sure everything's tight uh, in case when you calibrate the motor jumps off. The other thing you want to make sure it's also going to calibrate the I.O. and the convergence is just have an eye on the rig while things are moving so that you can make sure that no cables get snagged. So I just wanted to point out here now um, the two configurations that you can have with the hand unit. So you can have one hand unit doing uh, focus, iris, and zoom and then perhaps a second hand unit doing convergence and IA or IO um, there's a third option with C-Motion, which is you can, you can stack sliders. So you see here I have two more sliders that I use with my hand unit. And what we do is you take the knob off and you stack the sliders on there. So in essence then we're going to be able to do fo focus, iris, zoom, IO, and convergence on the same hand unit. Now. This works for me because I'll, I work in a, I shoot 3D in a way where we set our I.O. and we don't pull it uh, most of the time unless in very specific shots. And then we'll also either shoot with no convergence or shoot with very little and then adjust the rest of the post. So this is actually a situation that does, I work with a lot, so which is why I have the extra sliders and I think it's a lot more sleek and there's less pieces and all this kind of stuff. But you can do two hand units or you can use extra sliders to control the extra motors that are required. Alright, so I'm going to show you today how to actually install the sliders, although this is usually something I'll do as the owner before you even get them if that's the way you want to do it. Um, usually something I wouldn't you know, do in a nice calm prep room or something. So uh, you see here there's an Allen there and there's an, there's an Allen here. So this is the Allen that's actually included in the, uh, in the case. And you just loosen that guy up. Loosen this guy up. Now, obviously I've taken the battery out, so there's no battery in there. That's very important. So we want to be very careful as we remove these screws. Don't lose them. Now 
Now, very carefully, you can separate the knob. Now you see there's a there's a ribbon cable there and a little uh, clip that you got to take off. You know if you be if you're very careful, you should be able to get this off without a problem. There you go. So you see here um, the knob totally off. You see the circuit board in there. So be very careful with that. Don't let anything fall in there and um, so this now exposes two more Allens. They're all the same size, so you can't get them mixed up. So then this comes right off. See that there? And now you have your slider. So if you take a look at your other sliders, they also have a contact point right there that actually connects to the contact point right there. So you just slide them in. So um, when it comes to the extra sliders, you can actually slip the Allen in there and you first you have to separate them from each other. And they come apart. So you gotta put one out at a time. So once again you see there the contacts and they snap together and you tighten. With anything electronic, you don't need to tighten very much. We take our other one and we do the same thing. And make sure those are nice and taut. And then we just reverse the process that we'd done earlier. That connects clear cleanly. So we put that back on there. Reverse the process essentially. Without dropping too much stuff. And put that back. Connect this guy. And then just Note that the, um, the uh, let me get to focus there. So the knob itself has many different mounting holes. It actually allows you to mount it in different orientations on the handset. So just uh, keep a track of where you had it so that um, you put it back the same way. with this it's very delicate this is why I'll probably be doing this if you rent the unit from me and I'm sure if you rent it from Camadeus or your local rental house they would probably take care of this for you just uh, request it like that from them but anyways this way you know how to if you have to get in there and change it because now you're running you got an extra handset or something like that um, you can, you know how. Uh, I usually don't tighten one side and then not the other, so I'll just, I'll get both sides taut and then finish tightening it. Alright, so there we have it. The uh, three slider and the knob unit and so we will be doing iris io convergence focus and zoom on one hand unit pretty cool so put the battery back in turn the guy on and now it's 
seeing extra motors. So they're red because we haven't assigned anything to them yet. Um, the, um, the zoom is already you know calibrated so it knows what's up and that's working and the focus is working. So now we just need to essentially reassign all these and this one isn't lit up because it knows it's iris already. So, Alright, so um, next step, step three, is adjusting all the discrepancies. So you can see here through my transvideo monitor that everything is all messed up. So let's take a look over here at our rig and see what we see. See, we can, we can quickly see that there's a lot of things off. Alright, so here we have our rig and we will, we're going to want to do a visual inspection first and we will quickly start noticing some of the problems that we have going on here. So the first of which is our iris. So you can see here that the left camera iris is at 2.8 and um, the right camera iris is at 22 and if we look further down we see that the right camera is at 16 millimil on the zoom and the left camera is at 42 and same thing with focus this lens scale is in meters and you can clearly see this one's at infinity in a right eye so essentially everything's reversed um, the direction from one one motor to the other is reversed so on like a Preston you actually have to go into the transmitter and hit a switch and everything so when you get into the, this many motors um, luckily the C-Motion has a very slick system which we'll show you right now so alright let's get into how to change and match the directions on everything so press the button press it one more time to get in and then so my preferred method of doing this is you could just look on the Cayman itself and find out what um, what motor number it is but it's a lot easier you don't have to go to the rig and bother anybody I just go first I go over to the motor menu right there hit enter I know it's a little bit hard to see there but um, essentially you see M3 is focus so let's do I, I want to do focus first so it doesn't matter which one I change as long as they match so I go hit the back button and I go into the direction menu hit enter I go to M3 because I know that's my focus and then it's going left now I'm going to have it go right you can hear the motor there just change direction we're just going to go back in the menu let's find out an iris motor number so we go to motor hit enter and here's M5 is iris, right? So let's go back and then go back into the direction menu, enter, go to M5 and change that to the right. And you just heard it change. Once you hit um, reverse direction, you'll see it now it's at 22 and both lenses are now 22. And so we're going to go back once again into the motor menu and now we're going to look for zoom so there we go M7 is zoom so I'm going to go back go to direction scroll over to M7 hope you guys can see all this and then hit enter and then change that to right and that's it and now we should be all matched let's take a look and once you hit reverse direction on the zoom you'll see the lens now automatically switch over so that it's matching its direction with the top lens and same thing with the focus so everything will now match we can see that the left lens is at 2.8 20 mil and what is that a one meter and if we check the top camera 2.8 20 mil and one meter. Now, so this now brings us to our next point here. There's two things on a 3D rig that we need to match. We need to match focus ex uh, exactly, because both eyes have to be perfectly in focus. You know, focus is very important, obviously. 
And then also both cameras or eyes have to have exact same um, magnification or, uh, or focal length matching. So, you know, so that one, it, it looks like it's more or less on 20 and this one looks like it's more or less on 20. We need to verify that. And what the stereographer usually does, or the rig tech, is he uses something like the transvideo monitor to match that up, along with a nice, anything that's very easily ge uh, geometric that you can use to align the rig. So at this point before, um, you know, I let the rig tech take over, or in my case, I'm usually the rig tech and, or the stereographer, and I'll go ahead and align the rig. Uh, via the various uh, alignment procedures. So the first thing I do is match up focus. We can see here that the right camera is perfectly at one meter. And if we look at the, the left camera, it's a hair over. And as we travel through the focus range, especially on these Ingenue zooms, it's actually going to increase that differential. So, or, it, or more or less stay the same, you know, so as we get towards infinity, either that the difference between the two lenses are increase or decrease either way there's a mismatch so what we want to do then is with the c-motion we have this great feature that allows you to what they call scale the lens which is essentially keyframe it so you get 32 keyframe points and you can you can map one lens to the next so we're going to show you how to do that right now so all right i spent a few minutes and i uh essentially align the rig and if it wasn't aligned you'd be seeing uh, red and blue fringes on everything so if we look over at our rig here I have it pointing at the uh, chart right there and I lined everything up and so now when it's pretty well aligned like it is now um, we can start to see if we have any magnification difference or otherwise zoom and mismatch. Now before I even try to attempt to mess with that, the first thing I'll do is focus. Why? Because lenses breathe and if a one lens is focused a little bit farther than other, that affects the magnification. So, um, so what I'll do first is match the focus. So let's show you how to do that. So, all right, so let's see how to adjust the focus scale. So the focus has to be perfect, as I said, and match up. So as we can see here, the uh, left lens, let's see here, we'll, I usually start at the near end instead of towards infinity. Um, let's start here at the first mark, 0.61 meters. So I carefully line that up and then I'll take a look to see where that one is and we can already see we're about a millimeter off there on the mark. Alright, so here we go. So I'm going to set this up here so you guys can see what I'm doing with the menus and everything and how it affects the lens. So right now when we go in to adjust the lenses, the uh, left camera lens is actually not going to move and so we're going to calibrate this lens to the other one. So right now the other lens is at 0.61 meters, which is where this one is right now. And you may also be able to see that it's a tiny bit off, about a millimeter off. So let's see here. <clears throat> so hit the main button, hit it one more time. Go scroll down to where it says sync right there, the sync menu. So this also lets you, you can see now you can choose for setting the keyframe points for focus, for iris, for zoom. You can also clear all of them. I suggest you do that before you even start. So I do that, clear all sync points, yes. And then let's go up to focus scale. So that's what we want to do. So you hit, you select it. So you'll see here 0 slash 32. So that's showing you which sync point you're syncing. So I'm starting at the near end of the lens and I'll work my way back. So. <clears throat> You can see here as I rotate this, it moves it by, you know, I don't know, less than a millimeter. If I move it faster, it's going to move it more. Um, so obviously we don't want to mess that up. So I'm going to slowly rotate the dial and keep an eye on the marks. And right there, now it's perfectly right on the mark. And 
so I'm going to hit save on the left here. So it's the button underneath. And now it says 0, 01 slash 32. So it saved the first sync point. So now I'm going to use the knob and look at my other lens and put it right on the mark. And we're going to see that. See, the second one's off as well. So we're going to we're going to move my rotator here and put it right on the mark and hit save. And it moves it to the next sync point. It's a little bit off. So same thing. So essentially now at this point, you're going to rinse and repeat and you're work your way through all the marks on the lens so that they're both matching with one another. Um, of course, before you had done this, you would have you know, done your back focus and checked it with the chart that the, that the marks are, are actually accurate and that they're, you know, one foot is actually one foot of focus. And then so that when we line up them perfectly on, on so that the marks match up, the also the focus is perfect on both lenses and both camera sensors and everything. So once you're all done and you go through your whole lens and you set all your points, um, which, you know, you don't have to. That's a very important point is that usually, you know, you can put one or two, uh, since it's, it's like a keyframe, so in between the steps. So you can do one at five feet, one at 10 feet, you know, sometimes even four points, four keyframes throughout the focus scale is enough so that the lens now falls on, on the marks perfectly throughout the, throughout the whole range of the lens. So, um, but you know, if you want to be very precise, absolutely go through every single mark. So once you're done, all you got to do is, all right, here it says done. And again, you just hit the button underneath the mark and boom. All right, so um, I want to talk about here a little bit more of an advanced feature. So of course, you know, say you have two sets of zooms on a feature, or you have you're using primes, and so you have seven different lenses. So you would have seven different essentially keyframe maps um, for each of the lens sets, and of course you're going to mark a left and a right, and so the lenses are always exactly the same. But what you can do with this emotion is by using a USB stick, like this one. Um, this happens to be a C-Motion branded one, but it could be any USB stick. And on your Cayman, you just insert it in there. And then on the handset, you can go into one of the menus here, go into the main menu, go into user settings under main, and then you can First, obviously, in the blank, you would save your sync point for this set of lenses. So you would hit save. Um, so then you would change the lenses out, put a put a, a different focal length on, or these are 14 to 40, uh, 16 to 42 ingenues. You, if you had a 30 to 80, you'd put those on, or if you had a primes, you'd go to the next set, leave the uh, leave the USB stick in there. And then you would go through and set all your sync points like I showed you. And then once you were all done, you go into the main and go into user settings. And then you would do save. Now it saves it off as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can't type in like a number for what lens it's for. But so you just have to make a mental note. Number one is the 20, number two is the 35. You know, or if you have two sets of zooms, and like in this case, you know, number one is a 16 to 42, and the number two is the uh, 30 to 80. So once you have that, and then you have the USB, so you change your lenses, all you would have to do then is to, you know, go back into the main menu, go in, into the user settings, and then load. And then once you hit load, then you would just select user one, two, three, all the, you know, whatever lens you've put in there and saved it off as. So obviously this, this allows you then to really quickly um, you know, change lenses and recall all that work you did of setting the sync points. So as usual, once you do that, because of sometimes small differences and maybe the P, um, a little movement in the PL mount, you always, you know, shooting through D, you always want to be paranoid. So definitely go through and check all your points and make sure and then you can make little adjustments if you, if you need but it saves you a lot of time. So, great feature.
So I just want to show you guys here real quick um, the quick sync adjustment, uh, which on the old C motion system used to be called the marker button or the mark. And don't confuse that because in the menu when you assign it, there's still a marker in there that's for actually like marking lens on the C display, something different. So um, it's now quick sync, which is a more appropriate name. So what that does is it pauses one lens while you let, it lets you move the other. So it lets you bring two, two, two marks into alignment. Now it only does it on a single point, which for some lenses, if you get lucky, you do that one point, the whole rest of the lens falls into line. Um, and then the other situation you would use it is in case you lost your sync points and they want to roll and you're losing light and you need to quickly make an adjustment just so they can roll and make sure that both lenses are in focus are matching, then you can use it. So you would just go into the menu, go into the button menu, select the button we want, which is the red button, and then from the different options, select quick sync, and then exit. And now when we, we hold the red button right there, you're going to notice, oh, I changed that, okay, here we go, see, made a mistake. Go in there, buttons, red is quick sync. There we go, exit. Okay, so now I hit that, and notice only the bottom lens is moving and not the top one. So what that lets me do is, it lets me go to three feet on the top one, and move the bottom one until it reads three feet, and all right, we can roll. So you don't have to, oops. You don't have to, you know, go through the whole focus scale thing and do all the keyframes. You can just quickly do it real quick, you know, and you can notice that, you know, 10, 10 meters, 10 meters. It, it actually holds through a long part of this, the lens, depending on the lenses. So sometimes that might be all you need to make two lenses match up. You don't have to go through and keyframe everything. But on a lot of zoom, zoom lenses in particular, you, you do need to go through all the key, keyframe points. But then this can save you a lot of time. Obviously, like I'm going to show you in a second, if you hold the marker button down, it also it pauses essentially one lens entirely. So you can do you can do a zoom matching or an iris matching, just like that. Same thing. So the whole idea between the of the quick sync function is that it pauses one lens motors while you can make an adjustment, thereby allowing you to put to quickly sync up two lenses without having to go through and do all the quick sync. So I just want to show you how to use the quick sync uh, function to adjust the zoom. Uh, and this is probably something that's it's going to be used the most for. So you know, obviously with the quick sync, you can hold it down and adjust and quickly adjust or sync both lenses to one point. Uh, now with the zoom, this is something the stereographer or the rig tech um, are going to need and use this function quite a bit to match. Um, uh, any focal length mismatch that exists. So obviously on primes you can't do that. Um, you just live with the difference and you correct for it in post and you shoot charts. But on a zoom you can just zoom one lens a tiny bit more than the other and match the focal lengths perfectly. So as somebody that you know is learning about the handset all you got to do is know how to use it and then you know hand it to the person and they're going to analyze the image and make the adjustment. Um, and in some cases now this is done by a computer, but so I've assigned the And if it's not assigned you just go into the menu go into the button menu and I'm using the red button on the bottom and you just scroll down to where it says Q sync and Exit all right now it says the red button is Q sync. So hold down the, the button and then hit the zoom and you're going to notice only one lens is zooming. So there you go, you know how to do that. Now as a stereographer, I'm going to pay attention to a lot of different things in the image and get a perfect focal lens match. Now on the lens scales, it might one might read 20 and the other one might be a little bit off from the other, but what's important is what it's actually displaying on a 3D monitor such as this one, this trans video here. Um, so right now I have a perfect focal lens match. Now you can adjust this with the scales like we did the focus, but um, as a stereographer myself, I prefer to see now they're 
they're linked together, of course, because I'm not hitting the button. When I go to a different focal length, I just hit that button and I, I do a fine tuning. I like to fine tune it every time. Um, so, because elements tend to move different quality zoom lenses have, you know, um, different disparities and stuff. So it's something I'm always messing with. Uh, it actually helps me um, troubleshoot some alignment issues as well. So this is a function that if somebody asks for it, it's really simple. Just assign one of the assignable buttons to quick sync and then all he's got to do is hold the button down and it, it pauses one lens and moves the other and then they can match the, the, the zoom. So I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of what the convergence does. So on pretty much every rig out there, um, some rigs, the convergence motor is built inside of the rig, which in this case the, uh, the inner axial motor is actually built inside but not the convergence. So on many rigs that you'd be using a C-Motion for uh, convergence or I.O., it's actually just a little post and you just connect it in and gauge it and it moves the camera. And let's see what that looks like. You can see the camera move there. So that's it tilting in and tilting out. And what that looks like. All right, so you see here, um, we're not converged on the, uh, on the chart. So you see a red fringe and a blue fringe on the left side of everything. So as we converge with the handset, you'll see it, it brings that into alignment or puts the images on top of each other. It's also referred to as the point of zero parallax. But, so anyways, that's how you would pull convergence if you were a convergence puller. Using this, you'd probably be looking at a monitor. You can also make marks. There's lots of ways of doing it. But that's what it looks like on a monitor. As the motor moves, that's the result. Um, the other thing is the I.O., which I have on this slider here. So that's actually the camera moving side to side on the rig. So you'll see, you'll see that increase. So that's more 3D, that's a lot of 3D right there. Everything's jumping at you. And then as we slide the camera, um, we get less and less. And then we have to converge things back. There we go, so that's zero. So you don't see any fringing. So there you go, so you can have everything on here or you can have two handsets. So this can move very fast, you know, um, or very slowly. So one of the things I wanted to um, show you guys, one of the last things, is if you go in here, there's a whole menu called 3D mode. And um, that is only specific to this model rig, the screen plane. Um, it has a whole host of very advanced functions that we can get into in another video. But essentially ignore 3D mode if you're using anything except a screen plane rig. Um, that pretty much wraps us up. So once again, to review, uh, when you're shooting 3D, um, the only thing as a first AC uh, that you need to know about the screen play, uh, about the uh, C-Motion, C-Volution system, is that you can give people the option of having a second hand unit for a convergence puller, or if you need to pull I.O., or you can have everything on one handset, which is great. Um, the quick sync function, remember we assigned it to the button so we can quickly sync any one of the axes, uh, lens, lens information together. Um, the other thing is the keyframing, the, uh, the sync menu where you can have 32 different points where you can line up one lens to the other. And other than that, it's just, you know, you have one more axis of control, which is a 3D control, which is for, you know, for the rig, uh, the I.O. And then the other thing is the convergence, which some people use and some people don't. So it doesn't really, it's not that much more. The uh, more advanced functions that come with the C display and the use of the screen plane rig inside of the 3D menu is something we'll get into in the next video. But pretty much if you're just using an 8 motor C motion system on any number of rigs out there, 
mostly the only thing you need to know how to do is sync up the lenses and um, you can, using the USB stick to, to load values and that sort of thing and knowing how to use the quick sync function which hopefully you've all learned how to do today.